Welcome back, Zero K fans. This is Shire 53 with another exhibition match. This time we're going to be watching a game between Magman and the Sponge. And I. Oh. I really got to pay more attention to ELO differences here, but. Well, game is. Game is on, so I might as well go through with it. I'm feeling this is a bit of a. Curb stomp cast. I mean, we'll see how Magman does, but. This is a 350 ELO difference, so I don't blame you if you feel it's a four conclusion. Actually, a 400 ELO difference. I don't blame you if you feel this is a foregone conclusion. I really don't. Anyway, click about factory for the sponge and Warsaw. same for Magman. Onyx Cauldron going up. Well, I think we've seen this fairly recently. I mean, it's very open to all different factories. Fairly large map, but the way it's arranged allows for bots to work pretty well alongside vehicles, and both players going for cloakies. Magman is morphing up. What does he have here? He has heavy machine gun auto repair while. The Sponge has Beam Laser E-Cell on a Recon Com. Interesting choice, mostly because that means he has 1800 health on essentially 9 Soldier Collectors. That's... That's pretty fragile. At this point, Magman, I don't know if he's going to go for Air to get rid of that, but... That would... Actually, if he had gone for an Air Start, he probably would have won the game at this point. Because of that E-Cell. Magman, on the other hand, is diversifying a little bit in his power investment. Setting up Power Plants instead. At this point, though, he does have a bit of a bottleneck. The Sponge having a slightly better economy, which early game Cloaky Mirror is could mean something. Depends on how well Magman micros this out, though. He is he is retreating back a bit. He does have has lost one glaive, his second glaive not quite able to get in, and at this point, the Sponge is ahead both in terms of economy and in terms of micromanagement. Magman needs to retreat and does not have any units. It doesn't have units at home to actually deal with this. Getting a few more glaives, but. Doesn't really have the money to support this as well as the Sponge does. The Sponge stopping Glaive production, but he is moving in, and we have one less Glaive for Magman, and the last Glaive has no chance. Looks like the Sponge's Glaive is going to move in and just take care of this economy here. Magman trying to get what he can, but... I lost another Glaive there. It's just... It's tricky to micro Glaives. You just got to be careful. Make sure that you are retreating with them as best you can. Magman is moving in here. He does have the Machine Gun. Should be able to get rid of the Glaives without too much issue with his Commander, but he's lost five Glaives easy. No more glaives being produced by the sponge, though. He is focusing entirely on getting up his economy, and actually, he's starting to float a bit. Might want to re restart production here, and Magman going in for getting one kill at the cost of another glaive. Interesting choice putting radar on the ramp as well. I'm actually kind of surprised by that. Radar on the ramp does seem like an odd place to put it. I'd, I'd have put it over here, I guess, or maybe further up. But on the ramp itself, it's going to be the first thing to go down. Magman, however, is moving in with the commander. He's going to get rid of these glaives. At least a few of the glaives without too much issue. Even out the numbers a little bit. But we've seen that he doesn't quite have the same glaive micro ability as the sponge. So at this point, sponge building more glaives. And Magman getting up warriors instead. Realizing he's not going to win the micro war. And instead going for the unit counter. Now an Onyx Cauldron, given the size of the map, is a little bit tough to use warriors effectively. But if Magman sets it up that he actually chooses the battles well, then it could work out. He could actually make this work, and he is pushing forward. He is definitely expanding out towards the center, Well, the Sponge has been expanding out towards the north and west. It looks like he is now expanding towards the center, but at this point, the Sponge, like I said, he has had a healthy economy, a very healthy economy this entire game. At present, he has twice the economy of Magman, easily. And actually, Magman's commander getting a lot of flag off these glaives. Getting able to get rid of most of them, but the heavy machine gun is a little bit difficult to use, even against a large number of units like this. You'd think, okay, this is kind of the anti-small unit weapon, in a sense. And in a sense it is, but I think Light Particle Me is probably a better option overall. I mean, machine Gun, 198 damage a second on 200... Okay, it kills a Glaive every second. But Warrior has... Warrior is about the same, but it's just a faster weapon. It's faster, weapon. I think it's a bit of Splash, too, and it just... It works a lot better. As just been demonstrated right now, the Warrior's... Not a bad option here to stop the sponge from raiding too much. It's still going to be possible for the sponge to raid a fair bit, but it's limited. Now, Magman is continuing to get up a few more glaives. He does appear to want to go for a harassment around the north side, and he's not got a bad timing for it either. If he attacks right now, this this rector is pretty much vulnerable. Now, this base does have the lotus around it, but it has been attacked. At the same time, the center of the map, warrior coming in. One warrior will not get rid of a commander, even a recon com. Two warriors would. Three Warriors would be guaranteed, I think, no losses. 
depending on the micro. Recon comms are a little bit tricky because of the jump micro, but still. Magman is going to come on over with his own commander to try to get rid of the sponges and heal up his warrior. The sponge commander's moving in. It is level 2 commander, has Lazarus device and a nanolathe, which is actually a little bit unusual nowadays. Na Lazarus device is surprisingly not that popular, despite that, that it is free, re well not free, but it's resurrection on your commander. It's not a particularly popular module, I've noticed. A lot of people go for the armor and auto repair rather than going for resurrecting your opponent's units or your own units instead of reclaiming. But the Sponge Commander is going to go down so that Lazarus device does him no good. At this point, only way to resurrect right now is going to be Athena's and nobody builds Athena's, so what difference does it make? And I think Athena's can re resurrect. I don't know, I'm entirely sure. It looks like, yes, Athena's, according to the description, can in fact resurrect units. But now Magman's actually taking a nice center of the map. And raiding around the north too, not getting any mechs yet, but he is going to get this mech before he starts to get attacked. That is one thing. That is one that's going to go in his favor slightly. That one mech is down. The rest of his glaive is getting out of the way, but not quite, not quite micro as well as he could be. He had a nice local advantage there, but not retreating enough to get out of it. And that shadow is going to be a, th well, probably going to get rid of Magman's commander completely. Now Magman not relying on his commander that much for resources, but he is relying on it a lot for map control right now. In fact, the entire center map control is predicated on this commander right now. The Sponge does have Rocco's. He's trying to... I mean, he has Shadows, he has Rocco's. He's trying to lift this. At this point, no air switch for Magman, though. No, never mind, there is. The air switch just started over in this east side of the map. The Sponge going for another shot. Magman's commander does have an auto repair system, so it is a little bit harder for it to be hit by the Shadow effectively. But that shadow still can't easily be dodged. And another shadow gonna finish it off. No, not quite. Magman's commander will survive that. There should be a third shadow on the way though. It's under construction, never mind. Not on the way quite yet. Magman hasn't built a well, he can't easily build anything to stop the shadows in time. I think Chainsaw might be able to do that, but it's risky. And the sponge harassing Magman's expansion in the southwest. So Magman really doesn't have a whole lot to work with except for his commander and now a couple of warriors in the center of the map. And the Shadow gonna finish off his commander. Oh, not quite, it's a matter of time. No, the commander. No, the commander has more than 800 health. That Shadow will not kill it in one go. The second Shadow, however, will kill it and the jump has been spent. The second Shadow's on the way for the killing blow and unless the Rector heals it up, and maybe not even then, I think Magman's commander is going to die. We'll see though, one of the Shadows does go down. The other Shadow coming in here and the Sponge solidly taking control of the west side of the map. And Magman's commander is getting hit by a Rector, but like I said, even then, even then... Oh, nice! But There you go, you can do a bomb dodge with jump. Nicely done. So that command, that bomber has nothing in it, and Magman's commander is going to survive once again. Yet another bomb drop. That's, that is the power of auto repair. However, the last bomber is going to be coming in, and that will finish off Magman's commander. Valiant effort, and he just about had the jump left, but that won't be enough. Magman loses his commander, and with that... A decent amount of his energy economy, despite the fact that he had power plants, he still had invested quite a bit of energy into that commander. At this point, the sponge is air control. He can start taking out mechs across the map. He can take out warriors across the map. He can break the center. At this point, he could break through the center with his ground. I don't think he knows that yet. But at this point, Magman's biggest strength has just been taken away from him. Losing his commander, I think, lost in the game. Hey, I, I, I'm calling it now. That commander death is very big, and Magman... Building some solar collectors to make up for his commander's death, but even then, he just had a lot of firepower invested in that, and was focusing a lot of the sponge's attention on that. At this point, the sponge has all these bombers, he can just send them across the map and deal with all the metal extractors. Not much that can be done against it. Not yet, anyway. Admittedly, the air plant is 10 seconds away from being done, and once that's done, Avengers and Vamps could be on the way. Very likely, but it looks like the sponge is just building up for a massive attack on everything. Not sure if he's aware of the extent of Magman's territory or lack thereof, but yeah, the Sponge double added an economy, and there's not much going for Magman right now. Admittedly, he does have a warrior here that's going to help. Actually, he's going to get rid of a lot of glaives. So they're not careful. They're not spreading out. I don't see that happening. I mean, the Sponge just moved away, moved away a little while ago. So it's not the biggest deal. But it looks like these shadows are just taking out whatever targets they can. I'm surprised. Once again, I'm surprised he is not going for Mexes. I saw this. It was one of the more recent games I saw, I think, either on Saturday or on Tuesday, I think it was, or Thursday, I saw a game with a bunch of shadows be used, 
and all the shadows were used on normal units. They weren't used on mexes or on lotuses or on defenders. They were just used on the random units. I mean, the warrior would have been a good option because that's hard to get through. Admittedly, the glaives finished that off, but still, the warrior is a harder option. But yeah, like rectors and mexes and defenders and lotuses, those are your main targets. And then factories when you have enough. Admittedly, he does actually have enough. He has. He could actually kill both factories in one swoop. Just five. If he finds each factory, five for each. Double checking. No. I don't even need to double check. The sponge knows where the air factory is. He knows where it is. He's actually going to take it out with glaives pretty handily. Magman's glaives simply are not fast enough. They aren't numerous enough. This air factory is going down. One vamp is up. And these shadows, their days are numbered, but they could easily get rid of the cloaky factory in the process or just get rid of every other mechs. And the sponge loses all of his glaives but kills the airplane factory in the process of killing the airplane factory, of course, losing the glaives. Because factories explode like that. Most buildings explode like that. But right now, the Sponge has 10 bombers. He can get rid of every mechs and the Cloakabot factory without having to skip a beat. He can just one pass with all of his bombers do that. And I think all of his bombers are actually... They're all armed. What is he doing? He is fighting towards the center here. That's not a... That will turn out to be an okay move because that will break the entire center control. He'll take out the defenders and the radar and the lotuses and everything here, he will take out. Bombers are going to auto-attack whatever they can find. Although, unfortunately, overkilling that defender and the radar, not splitting as intelligently as they could be. The remaining bombers are going to take out a lotus and a solar collector. No mechs, though. No mechs is taken out, but a lot of the defenses have been, so the glaives can follow up. But it doesn't matter, Magman just realizes that's it, GG, and that is game. Bit short, and like I said, a bit one-sided, but hey, Magman did actually have a bit of a, well, not, maybe not a chance per se, but he was, he was doing something. Wasn't completely hopeless yet. Anyway, next game is going to be between Drone and El Torero, which should be a lot more even, so stay tuned for that.